We hope that you are, uh, got the message that we're going to be on tonight. And we hope that you're getting ready for the, the gospel tent meeting that's going to take place there next to the Eden Mall, September 16th through the 27th. I think everybody knows where that is. We hope that you make plans to come out. We've got a, a special uh, uh, a time uh, planned for you to come out and hear, the, hear God's Word being preached. Always there is a, a question and answer session that will take place every night if, if there are questions. And we're going to be talking about that a little bit at the end of our program and uh, tell you some, a, a special twist on this uh, question and answer session that uh, we hope that will uh, spur you to not only come out, but invite people to come out and uh, participate in this great event uh, with us. If you are in the uh, Eden area and you would like to assemble with the Church of Christ, 250 the Boulevard is where we meet, and uh, we are there Sundays uh, at 9 and 10, and also uh, Thursday nights at 7. Uh, if you're in the Martinsville area, Sunday, um, Sunday mornings at 9, 10, and 11 is when you can assemble with, with the brethren there. They meet on Wednesday nights at uh, 7. And if you're in uh, Danville, 120 American Legion, uh, they meet on Sundays at 10 and 11, and also Tuesday nights at 7. So there are all kinds of opportunities for you to come out and study the Bible. We hope that you'll do that very thing. So... Uh, remember how you can watch uh, a word from the Lord and what, and what does the Bible say on this station, but also what does the Bible say is coming to you, whigtv.com, Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock. And uh, we hope that you, that's out of Rocky Mount, North Carolina, we hope that you will uh, tune into that as well and uh, get more Bible. Friends, we're the kind of people in the Church of Christ, we're the kind of people that believe that if we are going to make a difference in society, it's going to have to start with the Bible. And that's really what we're all about. We're trying to make sure that, that the Bible, which is the Word of God, and the, uh, has, contains everything that pertains to life and godliness, uh, gets into the hearts and minds of men so that they can be more productive citizens, uh, have a better uh, quality of life, and enjoy the things that God intended for us to enjoy in the way He intended for us to enjoy them. So what we want you to do is study God's Word with us and, and see if we can't come to unity about uh, how, to, how to serve God. Friends, I want you to consider some things as we get ready for uh, this tent meeting. I want you to consider uh, some signs of the times. Now, in, in Matthew 16, Jesus made this statement to the, the Pharisees and those that were standing around about and listening to him teach. The Pharisees also, Matthew 16, 1 says, The Pharisees also, with the Sadducees, came and tempting, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. And he answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the, time, the signs of the time. So is it the case, friends, that we are looking at what is going on in our world and we can't discern the signs of the time? Can we predict the weather better than we can actually determine what's going on around about us? You know, if you just turn on the news, you will see fairly quickly that what is happening in our society and what is happening in the world is not all that pleasant. You, we, we have uh, uh, the, the threat of war constantly going on in the Middle East. They've been chunking rocks and, and uh, uh, sticks and, and things back and forth with each other over there since, since Ishmael and Isaac were kids. And I don't know why we think we're going to change that with anything other than the gospel. But instead, we try to go in and try to have, make peace with people when uh, there's not going to be any peace other than through uh, changing their religious ideology uh, by convincing them, by reasoning together. But now we've got threats of war in Syria using chemical warfare uh, upon their own people. Well, they were doing that in Iran. They were doing that in Iraq. Uh, they've been constantly killing uh, th their own people. And so now that's on our, on our plate now. But we have problems at home. Think about this. Unemployment's on the rise. People losing their jobs. Uh, random acts of violence are going on in, in, in the streets. Kids going up and shooting somebody else just because, well, we were bored. Uh, uh, parents killing their children. Somebody killing their, their wife or their girlfriend, I mean, what it was on, on Facebook, po posting it on, on YouTube or whatever. We live in a very sick society. Is it really getting better? Is it getting better? Are these the things that, that are constantly coming uh, to our view, in our view, and we're not paying attention to them? 
Can we discern the times? Can we see really what's happening? Listen, friends, what I want you to consider is, is we are in the midst of a social crisis and we have to address what's, what's happening to us. Now listen, when you see, when you see indications that, uh, that are happening, you ought to say, you know what, this, this, or when you see things happening, you ought, that ought to be an indication of this is what's coming later on. When you see, uh, uh, when you see the, the sky getting all dark in the, in the east, you say, oh man, it's coming a rain. It's going to come a st- thunderstorm. You know, it doesn't take, it doesn't take a, a very uh, highly educated high, or, 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 or smart person all skilled in the weather to figure out that if the wind picks up, and the sky gets dark, we're probably going to get some colder, rainy weather. And if the sun's shining, it's going to be nice weather. You see, but what about the things that are going on in our society? Do we pay attention to them and say, you know what, this is what's coming down the pike. This is what's coming down the road. This is what's coming for us, and this is what our society is going to be dealing with if we don't stop and pay attention. The signs are coming. The signs are abundant. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and Sadducees and saying the same thing. He said, you are looking... You can determine the, the, look at the sky and discern the seasons, and you can discern if it's going to be fair weather or bad weather, but you're not paying attention to what's going on right in front of you. The Christ, when he came, was going to, be, uh, was going to demonstrate certain things. He was going to do certain things. Things were going to be fulfilled uh, from prophecy when he came, and they were simply ignoring it. Here he was right in front of them, and they were simply ignoring it, not seeing the the times, not seeing the signs of the times. Well, friends, is there really a time that we can say is here because of the signs that we are seeing? I believe it is. I believe we can say that, not because we're, we're going to say, well, we can predict the future, but because the Bible tells us repeatedly that when certain things happen, when people start behaving certain ways, and when people start promoting certain things, then the, the, uh, uh, certain things are going to follow. Now listen to what Paul says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. Or excuse me, 2 Timothy 4, beginning in verse 1. He says, I charge thee therefore, I, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be in season, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall be tur- and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Friends, this is exactly what is happening. People are heaping to themselves teachers after their own lust. People who will tell them what they want to hear, tell them what will make them feel good, make them. Uh, really oblivious to what is really going on so that then they can just uh, um, uh, passively go through their existence and never have to worry about what's really going on. Friends, these are the things that are coming. And we need to wake up and realize what is happening. The time will come, and I'm saying the time is here. This is an occasion in history where people, good people, sit back idly and refuse to make a stand, refuse to be convicted on, on what they believe, refuse to be convicted on what they know is right, and so what happens is evil overtakes them. I believe it was Edmund Burke that said, the only thing that's necessary for evil to triumph is for, is for good men to do nothing. And that's exactly what we're, uh, what we're doing. We are involved in a society that are so passive, and we are so afraid, we've been so cowed into believing that if we make a stand, then everything bad is going to happen to us. Well, friends, something bad is going to happen to us whether we make a stand or not. See that? Someone says, well, I don't want to go fight. I don't want to be engaged in a a, a struggle to defend what I believe. Well, you know what? You're going to be engaged in the struggle whether you believe it or not. Whether you want to or not, you're going to be engaged in the struggle. You're 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 going to find yourself right in the middle of it. And so what we have to realize is we have to make a stand. I'm reminded of... Of the old movie, uh, I believe it was Shenandoah with, with uh, uh, James Stewart, and uh, you know he was a, he was a Virginia uh, farmer. He didn't want he was not going to fight in the war. He was not going to send his sons to fight for the for the Union or the or the Confederacy. And uh, he kept saying, "It's not my war, not my war." But you know what happened? He didn't choose a side. But you know what? The war came anyway. 
and the war took his homestead and took many members of his family and, and his sons and, and so forth. And so the fact was he wasn't going to choose one side or the other, but the war still came. Friends, you can sit there and think, I'm not going to make a stand one way or the other, but the war is still going to come. And so the time is coming when people don't want to hear the truth. That means we have to be all the more determined to make a stand for the truth. Notice this. In 2 Timothy 3 and verse 1, one chapter before what we just read, here's what Paul said. Paul said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. If that doesn't describe... A large segment in our society, what does, friends? What really does that, does that picture paint for you? Do these words paint for you when you see that? Lovers of their own selves? We live in a me generation. I'm not talking about the millennials. I'm talking about the me generation. Everybody wants what's, what's all about me. Me, 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 me. You know? It's like, it's like they, are, uh, you know, they, they want, they're just attention hogs. You know? I want to be in the limelight. I want to be, I want to be the center of attention. I think that's what... Uh, our, our local atheist said about that. He was the only child, so yeah, he was. He loves. He, he's a camera hog. Well, we live in a me generation, and it's not. And it's not just a select few. It's more and more people are only concerned about what's in it for me. Lovers of their own selves, covetous. They desire to have things that that other people have. Boasters, proud, blasphemers. When I think about the covetous, you know, the, these people that say, "Well, you know, we're the we're the uh, uh, the the ninety nine percent." And we want what everybody else has. We want what the rich people have. Well, why don't you get a job? I remember one of those guys in uh, Occupy Wall Street was, was offered a job, and he said he wouldn't take it because he needed $80,000 a year to live. And so here he was complaining that there was no jobs, and when he was offered a job, he said, no, I'm going I'm to decline. You know what that is? That's the me generation. That's people who are simply uh, 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 unthankful, unwilling to work, and this is just one part of what Paul's describing as society. So here we are. Paul says, here's the time. The time's coming. And he says, the people will be without natural affection. How many times have you seen people in the news? Has it been recorded that, that a mother kills her own children or a father kills their own, uh, his own children? You know what? When I talk about natural, unnatural affection or lacking of natural affection, I think about the very fact that in our society, people can, can come together outside of marriage or whether, even inside of marriage. But they come together, they conceive a child, and while it's in the womb, they go down to the abortion clinic and they kill their own offspring. They kill their own offspring before they even have a child. Let's just kill it. Let's just kill it. That's a natural affection. Now, if the child is born, if the child is born, that's murder. But if, the, but if his head hasn't come out of the womb, guess what? It's not, a mortar, it's not a murder, it's abortion. That's what a partial birth abortion is, friend. It's a baby coming all the way out of the womb except for the head. Except for the head. Everything about the baby, kicking and screaming, or kicking is, and, and moving, wheeling around, is, is, is alive. And then the doctor takes a pair of scissors and stabs it in the back of the neck, snips the spinal cord, sticks a hole, uh, holes in there and sucks the brains out. Oh, but that's abortion. That's not murder. Well, excuse me for, you know, for not knowing the terminology here unnatural affection and that's that's a sign of the times friends that's the sign of the times and we're oblivious to it. we're saying well you know yeah it's bad hey hate to say anything about it and if you do say anything about it you know what well you're just a a, 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 a bigot racist you know male chauvinist whatever you know we all for equal equal rights and reproductive rights and whatever that means see that and so so we live in we live in this me generation perilous times these things are happening truce breakers People can't even keep the word. False accusers. Speaking of, of truce breakers, uh, I was just talking to uh, uh, Charles earlier about people that, that have a contract and won't pay their bill. Truce breakers. Uh, incontinent, that is, they're not satisfied, can't, can't control themselves. Uh, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Right before we came on, right before we came on, there's a video clip of Mr. Larry Serber. I hate the Church of Christ. I despise the Church of Christ. Well, here it is despises them that are good. Friends, we don't do any harm in the society. We don't do any harm in the community. People say we do. We haven't harmed anybody. Simply teaching a message from God's Word, from the Bible, 
And all, for, all, for that, we are despised. We're hated. Well, the times are coming. Here they are. Despised are them that are good. Traitors. Heady. You, just, you know, traitors. You know how many times uh, our country is now uh, being, uh, uh, you know, we're going to leak this and leak that or uh, someone comes up and leaks vital information. Now, I'm not saying that the information that was leaked wasn't good to know, but you, you have to say, now, is this person a traitor or is this person a, a, a patriot for doing what they did? But when people are, are uh, uh, betray what they have uh, promised to uphold, that's a traitor. Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, all these things describe the current generation, the current uh, uh, face of society, if you will. And so here we are in perilous times, is what the Bible says. And do we see what's going on? Do we see what's going on? Now, if you skip on down to verse 13, here's what Paul says. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Friends, you can say, well, I just don't think anything bad's going on, and you can just turn a blind eye to it, but it's still going to come. And this is what we are fighting against. This is what we're trying to oppose. We're trying to oppose the times. We're trying to stop the times from changing. We're trying to hold back all the wickedness and evil that's in our society, and we want you to do the same. That is what our goal is. That's what our plea is. That's how we're going to, to make this world a better place. The world is not going to become a better place by voting someone into uh, Congress or into the White House. That's not going to help our society. What's going to help our society is people who have a changed heart and mind based upon what is morally right, what is based upon the, uh, uh, the uh, absolute truth of God's Word, and re recognizing that there is an absolute morality that we all have to adhere to, and when we have that standard in mind, in front of us, and we all conform to it, that's when society will get better. <clears throat> but friends, until then, until then, we're going to be facing the changing times. Can we see the times? Can you see what's changing? Can you see what's, what's coming down? Listen, friends, this is a time. These are the times like what Paul has been describing. And they will come again in society. They'll make a cycle because when, when a society gets so wicked, sin is always self-destructive, friends. Society will, will self-destruct. It will consume itself. It will be destroyed. And then society will rise from the ashes leaving behind all the sinful, wicked corruption that, that, uh, uh, that has destroyed a society and another society will rise up and it will be this cycle until the Lord comes. Friends, I do not want to be in the dregs and ashes of society. I want to live in a good society, a wholesome society. But these are the times. These are things that are changing. These are the things that are coming. And so we're trying to say, let's, let's look, you know, how long will people endure this? Are you really paying attention to the signs? Let's look at some of the signs. Here's some more of the signs that we're talking about. Let me just give you an example of this. This is a, 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 an article that was written back in 2008. Now I'm trying to show you how the times have come upon us. Look at this. In 2008, the headline says, Democrats issue 2008 gay pride proclamation supporting homosexual marriage. Now, that's 2008 they made that proclamation. 2008, we support homosexual marriage. Okay? Now, now where are we? In 2012, the president came out and said he's for homosexual marriage. It's becoming more and more emboldened, right? And now, where are we today? Now, states are actually acknowledging, or, 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 or yeah, I guess acknowledging that Two people of the same sex can be married, legally married, have legal status as and is a marriage. And so the effort to define marriage, redefine marriage, started a whole lot longer than 2008. But I'm saying, look where we came from. We came from, uh, in just a few short years, we came from a, 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 a push to get uh, homosexual marriage legalized and uh, authenticated or recognized as, as true to really it's just overrunning. There's no more pushback. There's no more, there's no more opposition to it. 
Here's what this article says. I don't have to read it for you. I know it's kind of small. But it says, despite all that we have accomplished, our work is not done. Now, this is from this is the, uh, the, the issue, 2008, uh, Democratic issue in 2008 on gay pride proclamation supporting homosexual marriage. Despite all we have accomplished, our work is not done. We need to fight efforts to write discrimination into our laws and constitution. To write, W-R-I-T-E. That means make laws that show, that, that say that if you oppose homosexuality, you're discriminating. And then they'd have the power of the law on their side. Now here's what it says. It says, uh, this statement was in reference to uh, H.J. Resolution 89, the Marriage Protection Amendment, which makes marriage legal only between a man and woman. The Democratic Party opposes the Marriage Pro uh, Protection Amendment because they believe it is discriminatory against homosexuals. Now, that was 2008. Now, what happened in 2013? What just happened this summer? Fast forward five years uh, to uh, uh, 2013, and here's what we have. We have the, UN the United States Supreme Court striking down the Defense of Marriage Act and thus, the gates now are open for homosexual marriages to take place and resume in California. And so Californians opposed same-sex marriage. Of all places, California had enough sense to recognize same-sex marriages are not what we want. But yet, but yet, because no one pushed back, because no one said, hey, you know, let's, 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 let's fight this tooth and nail, they backed down, they cowed down, intimidated down into saying, you know what? I think we're going to have to give up. And so it went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, you know what? That was unconstitutional. The people of a state, they said, the people of California can't vote to make a law in their state that says one man and one woman. That's what happened, friends. And you say, well, you know, that's out there in California. That's out in California. Well, now it's Vermont. Now it's Massachusetts. Now it's, uh, I, I don't know, Minnesota, Wisconsin, wherever. It's coming. They're coming. And just because you, you people in, in North Carolina, just because you voted against same-sex marriages in this, in this uh, recent election in, in 2012, just because you voted against it, don't you think for one minute they're going to stop. Don't you think for one minute that the push to make same-sex marriage acceptable and force it on you, don't think that they're giving up. Oh, no, they're just gaining momentum. They're getting more It's a sign of the time. Are you ready to stand up? Are you ready to oppose something? See that? And so, friends, what I'm trying to get you to realize is if we don't do something now, if we don't make a stand in the here and now, the tide is just going to flood over us. It's going to wash our society away. I have said to, uh, uh, to people, I'll, I'll say it uh, now. I may have said it uh, on TV before. But I, I fully believe in my children's generation that they are going to see violent uh, oppression for standing up for the truth. In, in my children's generation, they're going to see people put to jail or worse for simply saying that homosexuality is a sin. For making a stand on moral grounds for what they believe. It's going to happen. No, I'm, I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm not a prophet, nor the son of a prophet. And I'm not trying to be all doom and gloom, but I'm telling you, it's coming. You don't think it's coming? You don't think that in, 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 uh, in the next 50 years that what we're going to see is we're going to see a rash of more and more immoral and ungodly activities being protected by law? It'll happen, friends. It's happening. Now, this has just happened in, in, in just five, say, five years. Actually, it's been going a little longer than that, but in five years, we've seen a great jump. We've seen a jump from states opposing homosexual same-sex marriage to the Supreme Court upholding it, saying it's legal. Well, you know what? I don't care what the Supreme Court says. It will never change what God says. God's law was here long before the Supreme Court was, and it'll be here a long time after the Supreme Court's gone. But friends, are we going to make a stand? You don't, think the, you don't think the times are, are coming? Look at this. You may have heard about the, uh, uh, the bakery up in Oregon. The, uh, the, the couple, family-owned family -owned business, bakery. 
refused to make a cake for two women who wanted to get married. They just refused to make the wedding cake for them. They said, you know what, we don't, we don't have, we don't discriminate against making cake for a homosexual. We just don't want to uh, do it for the marriage. We don't recognize uh, marriage, uh, same-sex marriage, and so we're not going to participate in that. It, they believed it was a sacred ceremony, which it is, and so uh, they didn't want to participate in it. Now, why couldn't they have that prerogative? Why couldn't they make that choice? Why was it wrong for them to be able to say, this is my belief, this is what I, I think, this is what I feel? Uh, why is it wrong for them? See, but it's wrong. It's wrong for them to believe what they want to believe. If it's contrary to what the immoral, ungodly part of society deems as wrong. I find it very, very interesting that the people who are doing the evil are the very ones who will turn around and say something is evil. See that? So here's the headlines. Sweet cakes owners respond to firestorm over wedding cake decision. Here's another headline. Bible thumping bees. This is what they're called. The B word. Uh, bakers who refused to make gay couples wedding cake shut down their own shop following threats and anger. Friends, you would be, a, you'd be, maybe you're not, but I would hope that you would be appalled if you saw some of the, uh, if you saw some of the, uh, the emails that were written to these people, some of the, the threats that were uh, being uh, issued uh, to, these, to these people. It was, it was amazing. It was amazing to me. Uh, let me see if I can pull some of these up and, and uh, read them for you. I was just um, almost beside myself by some of the things that, that uh, they were saying. And while I'm working on this, uh, are, are our phones working? I don't think my phone is plugged in in here, uh, Earl. Here's a, uh, uh, let's see, here's some of the, uh, the emails that were sent to these people. Now remember, these are the, you know, these are the kind, loving, compassionate, peace-loving homosexuals, you know, they're just oppressed and they're so, so maligned and so uh, uh, hurt and distraught. Uh, this is what they say. Uh, you stupid, Bible-thumping, hypocritical curse word. I hope your kids get really, really sick and you go out of business. I think they did it. No, 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 remember, did you hear that? Now, these are, these are from the, the oppressed, the people who are bullied. See? The people who are bullied are the ones saying, I hope your kids get sick and you go out of business. Yeah. Who's really being the bully here? Who's really being the oppressed, oppressed and oppressor here? Here's another. Here's hoping you go out of business, you bigot. Enjoy hell. Again, I find it interesting that the people who are doing the most wicked are the ones telling other people they're going to hell. Well, I got news for you. I got news for you, friends. If, if you're living in a, in a homosexual lifestyle and you don't repent of that, uh, if that's the person writing that email, well, the cake baker people will be there right there with you, or you'll be right there with them. See, friends, so here's these people, have a family business, they're, they're running their own business, and all of a sudden they're the bad people. They're the bad people. Now, why is that? Why is it? I'll tell you why. It's because we have let, we have allowed wickedness and evil to become so prevalent in our society and we don't see it as it really is. See, we think the homosexual, homosexual movement, you know, the face of the homosexual is Ellen DeGenerate, you know, or, or these, uh, the, the, the homosexual basketball player that comes out. Oh, you know, it's a great guy, super guy, you know. Oh, yeah, you know, Will and Grace and, the, and uh, whatever's on TV, that's, that's the picture of homosexuality. No one wants to show you the, the, the dark, dirty secrets and the, the repulsive side of that lifestyle. No one wants to tell you about the depression that comes with uh, 
with the homosexual lifestyle, the anger that comes to the homosexual lifestyle, the short, uh, shortness of life that comes to the homosexual lifestyle, the, the physical, uh, uh, the, 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 the health issues that come with the homosexual lifestyle. No one talks about that. See, friends, we're saying now's the time to make the stand. Now's the time to say, you know what? We, these are the times, and we're not content to sit back and let them continue. Uh, can we put up the phone numbers? So, so friends, here's, here's what we're trying to say. We're trying to say in the Church of Christ, we're trying to make a stand to oppose these things. Now, if you don't think, if you don't think that this is an issue, continue listening. Continue listening. Uh, this is uh, continued from the article about the, the, the cake bakers. This is what the man says, the, the husband of the couple. He said there's a lot of closed-minded people out there that would like to pretend to be very tolerant and just want equal rights. But, on the other hand, they're very, very mean-spirited. They are very, they've been militant. And the best way I can describe it is they've used mafia tactics against the business. Basically, if you do business with sweet cakes, we will shut you down. You know what's happened? See, the reason why they're shut down is because none of the vendors that supply their their, their baking needs or whatever will do business with them for fear that if they do business with, with sweet cakes, they fear that, you know what, now they're going to be retaliated. Friends, this is the bully mentality. So that, you do business with them, you're going to get it. And so what happens? Oh, I'm, I can't do that. You know, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to protect myself. And so I'm going to let these people suffer. You know what, friends, you'll be next. See, the bullies, friends, are not the people who are standing up for truth and for morals. The bullies are the people who want to be evil. Wicked men will wax worse and worse. Not the righteous, not the, not the, uh, the good people. See that? They're the ones that are, going to, that are, that are uh, waxing worse and worse. So you don't think, you don't think it's uh, uh, becoming more and more prevalent in our society that wickedness is prevailing? Look at this. Here's a, here's a, a headline. Christian airman, now we're using that term loosely here, Christian airman claims he was fired by lesbian commander for gay marriage stance. And here's the article. Senior Master Sergeant Philip Monk has served in the U.S. Air Force for 19 years with a clean service record, but his new lesbian commander has relieved him of duty and is threatening his career allegedly because of his Christian beliefs regarding gay marriage. Officials are investigating as Monk appeals his punishment. Now, this is what the article says uh, about the situation. Now, granted, there's only one, one side of this, so if I find the other side, I'll be glad to read that. But Monk was first sergeant in the, in the two, uh, 326th Training Squadron stationed at Lackland Air, Fo Air Force Base in San Antonio. Uh, according to his attorneys, Monk recently returned from a deployment and found he had a new commander, Major Alyssa Valenzuela, who is, op who is openly lesbian. Valenzuela gave Monk an order demanding Monk tell her whether he regards those who oppose gay marriage as discriminating against homosexuals. His attorneys add that he was told that supporting gay marriage was now military policy and that he was not allowed to disagree with that. Now, friends, is, is homosexuality military policy? If it's military policy, then wouldn't you have to be a homosexual to be in the military? See, just because something is accepted by the military doesn't mean that everyone has to then condone it. Just because the military accepts it doesn't mean that you have to come out and say, I'm for it. See that? See, everybody thought, do a little uh, flashback on your history, everybody thought that Bill Clinton was, was uh, hurting the homosexual movement when he passed the don't ask, don't tell rule, when he signed that into law. Everybody thought, oh, you know, he's, he's, he, he, uh, he didn't keep his commitments, you know, he's not really a, a lover of the, the homosexual agenda, but really what he did was, friends, he just opened the door just a little bit, got com everybody got comfortable with, with homosexuals being in the military, just as long as you don't, you know, don't ask, don't tell, we're fine with it. Now, now that's taken off the table. 
how many years has that been? That's been, what, 12, uh, 14, 16 years maybe? And now, see, now that's come off the table. Now you're forced to accept it. See how that works? Slowly, gradually, in increments, evil becomes worse and worse and worse. It's a sign of the times. Are you looking? Are you paying attention? Are you paying attention to it? And so, Monk claims he responded that he could not answer Valenzuela's question the way she wanted and that he feared expressing his true beliefs could put him in legal jeopardy. So she says you need to, according to this article, you need to say that you are in favor of homosexual marriage. And he says, I can't answer that question, or I can't make that statement, for fear that if I do, I'll be subject to, to uh, 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 legal jeopardy. In other words, he knew that if he made a statement, it was going to be contrary to what she wanted to hear. So he had an option. He said he would have to either not say anything, or he would say something, and that would get him in trouble. So he said, if I say something, I'll get in trouble. I can't say it. Monk says he was then relieved of his duties. I was essentially fired for not validating my commander's position regarding homosexual marriage. Now, friends, do you really think that this is an isolated incident? It's not. More and more it's going to be prevalent. We're going to see more and more cases like this where individuals who think they have the freedom to, of their belief and freedom to do what they want to uh, say and do and believe and hold, that those are going to be taken away because, remember, we live in a society now. We live in a society where if there is no objective standard and there is no moral right and wrong, then what is going to happen is the people who want to do wrong will eventually make the rules and say, you know what, now we're going to make the rules that say you can't oppose it. Now what are you going to do? See, in a subjective society, which our atheist friend says is the best one, you know, it's subjective morality is, is the best, is best morality. Well, pretty soon, that subjective morality is going to turn and the majority of people who think that homosexual lifestyle is okay, and then here comes pedophilia. It's going to come down, down, down the pike. It's rolling. I was just asked the other day by one of the brethren, said, do you think, you know, how long do you think it'll be before pedophilia is accepted? I said, it won't be near as long as homosexuality took. It won't be near as long to accept pedophilia as it, will, as it took to accept homosexuality. That's, that's just the way it works. And so because when evil men wax worse and worse, it gets worse faster than it did the first go-round. Well, back in the 70s, and back in the 70s when the homosexual movement really started going, it was still underground, it was still like a subculture. Now it's mainstream. Now it's mainstream. Pedophilia won't take that long, friends. Are you looking at the signs? Are you looking at what's, what's, what's really happening in our society? All right. Sorry about that caller. I uh, didn't see you uh, blinking there. Call back. We'll take your call. So here's what we're talking about, friends. We're talking about the signs of the times. Are you really paying attention? Because if we don't step up and make a stand now, it's just going to get worse. And here's the problem. See, here, here's really the, the issue. Uh, people haven't made a stand for so long that now it's hard to make a stand. Now they don't know what to do. Now they're afraid to do it. Do you realize what happens when you don't fight, when you don't take a stand? Friends, if you don't oppose uh, evil, and if you don't make a stand, then what happens is uh, you, you, you become afraid of making that stand. I want you to consider this. In Exodus 13 and verse 7. Now here's, here's, here's the setting. Exodus 13 verse 7. Uh, God is leading Israel. God is leading Israel out of, out of bondage. And he's, he's got two options. He's trying to get them to, prom to the promised land. And so here's what he says. It came to pass... When Pharaoh, let me put this up where we can read it. 
it came to pass when Pharaoh, if I sneeze, I'm finna come on, uh, sneeze is coming on, had let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. Now why? Why would God not uh, lead them through the land of the Philistines? Here's why he says, he says, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. They had been enslaved for 400 years and so here they are now being faced, now they've got freedom, but what do we do? If we lead them into war, lead them into battle, they'll, they'll repent, they'll turn back to Egypt, they'll say, let, let, that's, that's too hard. Friends, that's exactly what our society has done. Our society has become so afraid of making a stand. We have been intimidated so much to thinking that if we oppose anything on moral grounds, if we make a, any kind of moral stand, if we oppose any kind of evil and wickedness, then we are liable to be accused of being evil ourselves. And we don't want to be accused of that. So what we do? We sit back and do nothing. But it's this principle. It's the Exodus 13, 17 principle. It's the fear of seeing war. Friends, I'm going to tell you, we're in for a war. We're in for a battle. It's a battle for our society. It's a battle for our community. It's a battle for our country. It's really a battle for the world. And so, what are we going to do? Are we going to be afraid when we see it? Are we going to make a stand? Are we going to be willing to, to step up? But I say, this is what, what troubles me, is because more and more the religious people are buying into, buying into the notion that uh, more and more they're buying into the notion that, well, we can't oppose it. And so what do they do? They uh, accept it. They accept it. Look at this. Here's a church sign. Now, this is in Canada. I will say this, this is in Canada. But it says Jesus has two dads and he turned out just fine. Now, friends, is that, if that's not blasphemous and sickening, I don't know what is. Jesus had two dads and he turned out just fine? Now, stop and think about that, friends. Jesus did not have two dads. He had a heavenly father and an earthly father. All right? He was raised in a family that had uh, an intact family unit as God designed. A father and a mother and a child. Brothers and sisters. He was raised with an intact family. He didn't have two earthly dads. He didn't have two earthly moms. Everybody has a heavenly father in the sense of God created us all. So this, this sign is repulsive because number one is blasphemous to God and Jesus, but look at this. It also is on a, uh, uh, on a marquee of people that should be opposed to homosexuality. But more and more people, the churches aren't opposed to homosexuality. They're letting them in. Methodists, let them on in. Come on in. The Anglican, let them on in. Episcopalian, let them on in. Come on. Yeah, we can't make a stand against them. Friends, we live in a society where the people who should be upholding the truth, the, 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 the pillars of the community, the pillars of the truth, you might say, are so, are so afraid that, uh, that they're not going to uh, uh, say anything. I believe it is Philippians 2. I didn't, I didn't put this up here. Let me just look right here before I put it up there. I think it's Philippians 3. In verse uh, 5, this is what we should be, should be doing, Ephesians uh, 2.15. Ephesians 2.15. This ought to be the case, friends. We ought to be uh, holding up the light that changes society, not afraid to make an influence. Philippians 2.14, do all things without murmuring and disputing, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth, holding forth the word of, of life, 
that I may rejoice in the day of Christ and have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Friends, we, are, we live in a society that people are afraid to be influenced for good. And the churches, the religious people, are not helping. They're actually changing sides. They're actually on the side of evil now. Not, not mention the fact that they're already teaching error, doctrinal error about man's salvation. Now they're contributing to the demise of society by teaching the, the things that are immoral and ungodly. See that? It used to be the time that at least the religious people, they may have their doctrine on how to get to heaven or salvation wrong, but at least they were right on the social issue. But even that's not the case anymore. That's not the case anymore. Oh, uh, poor Joel Osteen. He has just a tough time even making a stand. Listen to what, what he says. This is a, uh, an interview that he did with Oprah. You might have heard it. But listen how, how hard it is for him to make a stand uh, uh, for the truth. Will a gay person be accepted into heaven as you see it? Well, I believe they will. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that, uh, you know, if we... You have to have forgiveness for your sins. But, you know, sometimes we look at gay being, you know, a bigger sin than being proud. <coughs> or being, you know, not telling the truth. I don't think God categorizes sins. To think that we're all going to be without one sin, I hope that's true. But I don't think, I don't think any of us would make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. Now, I would encourage people to be willing to, to change and grow. And, if, you know, if you've got a problem with your temper, let's... let's growing but I think that it's going to be open for all of us does that mean that you're saying that you believe that being gay would is a sin I believe that being I believe that homosexuality is shown as a sin in the scripture I do I do that's just that's just the way I mean my, you know Oprah it's a hard thing in a sense because I'm not I'm for everybody mm -hmm. I'm not against anybody I don't think anybody's second class but when I read the scripture I just with good faith I can't see that it it doesn't show that that's not that that being a sin that it is a sin Friends, that makes me sick. He says homosexuality is a sin. I believe it's a sin. The Bible says it's a sin. But you know what? I, I think they're going to get to heaven. Well, what is the point of even saying it's a sin? What's the point of saying it's wrong if you're going to turn around and say, but you can get to heaven? The Bible clearly says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, excuse me, 6 and verse 10, that Thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. I'm sorry, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves of mankind shall inherit the kingdom of God. And yet, Mr. Joel Osteen turned around and says, well, you know, I, I, I'm not against anybody. Friends, I'm not against anybody either. But I'm against people being involved in sin and living in a ungodly immoral lifestyle and here's a sign of the times friend when we start giving in and we start watering down sin like Mr. Osteen did then be ready because before too long he's not going to be able to condemn he's not going to be able to condemn the pedophile he's not going to be able to condemn anything as a matter of fact he said that when it comes to his his worship or in his church he doesn't really get into these issues. Listen to this. Now, this is a, a, a statement he made to uh, on CNN with uh, Soledad O'Brien, and uh, I, I really, I really kind of felt sorry for him. Uh, he just got ambushed and beat all up because he wouldn't make a stand. And, and friends, this ought to be a lesson. If you're not going to be definit definitive. If you're not going to make a stand, a bold stand on what's right and wrong, just be ready because the wolves are out there. They're going to chew you up. They chew Joel Osteen up. Listen to what, what they did. They gained up on Weak and they're going through struggles and things like that. What can I do to lift their spirits? I believe there's enough pushing people down already. So when people leave one of our services or read one of my books, I want them to leave saying, you know what, I can be better. I can rise higher. So I think it's just trying to speak to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, not speaking down to them. I mean, I was raised in a, and in, in my father was a great minister. He didn't speak down to people. But in the old days, church, you know, you went to church to know what you're doing wrong. And you left there thinking, oh, man, I am so yeah, guilty. I can't do right. And you, and you push down. But I see it just the opposite. I want people to leave saying, you know what, I can be a better father this week. I can be a better employee. I can, I can accomplish my dream. So, I don't know, it's something about just speaking to, you know, the seeds of greatness that God's placed in all of us. Well, then let me ask you a question because... 
when you came on Piers Morgan show a while ago, he asked you about homosexuality, Christianity, homosexuality, and almost every time we have a pastor on, it's a conversation we have. And you, you are known for these uplifting ceremony uh, services, and you talk to a lot of it's like 45,000 people who attend. And I always wonder when you are, you say homosexuality is a sin, and there's a bunch of people who clearly are are gay who are ex or in your church. You're calling them sinners. I mean that. Well, so that I think you mean. Joe Osteen uses the S word in church, calls someone a, a sinner? I don't know what the world, what is the world coming to? Joe Osteen used the S word in church, calls someone a sinner. Well, so did Dad, Miss O'Brien, you're later going to say you go to church. Has, have you not been convinced that you're a sinner? As a matter of fact, the rest of them are going to say, well, we're all sinners. Well, why are you upset if he calls somebody a sinner? See, he should have come back and said, well, are you a sinner? If she says yes, well, then you called yourself a sinner. Why are you getting mad at me? But instead, well, you know, he's going to bat his eyes and little sparkle his little teeth and go on out and, and, and continue to be chewed up by these folks. Listen. Opposite of uplifting, I would it say. It does, but one, one, I don't necessarily focus on that. I only talk about that on the interviews. The other thing, too, is it seems like in Christianity sometimes we categorize sin. I mean, pride is a sin. Being critical is a sin. Being negative is a sin. The scripture even think, says anything that is not a faith is a sin. We're you all sinners. Change. You'd say we're all no, sinners. Yes. And so I think we so say, okay, homosexuality is not so bad, right? Well, I, I don't think it's God's best. Neither do I think, you know, but we're being not, prideful. Nobody's God's best, no, right? we're all growing. I That's mean, so don't you think, though, that with the, with the country struggling with increasing acceptance of all its citizens and your for basic fairness for everybody that in situations where like we're trying to pass these marriage equality bills in certain states now that you ought to, you have an important voice to lend to that especially to kids who are maybe worried about who they are and where they fit in the community well you know i think i have an important voice but i'm very i think i've been good i think part of my if you want to call it success is i've stayed in my lane and my lane is lifting people's spirits and there are, there are issues that good bible believing people see on both sides of the fence I, but you know, I just, so you I think, would say to, to, to gay young people that, you know, do what you feel is comfortable, yes? You know, I, I, would, say, I would say do what I feel like the Scripture says. I don't think being... Well, and there's a big debate about what Scripture says, it is, right? It is, it, it is. And so okay, that's, that's we, good. Well, well that's but I'm lost, though. So, uh, because, you, but when you say, you would say the Scripture says homosexuality is a sin. Exactly. So then, but, so this is what I'm trying to understand. I, I'm, I go to church regularly, but sure. I'm not so strong on the Bible, so you'll have to walk me through sure, some sure. of this. And there are some pastors who disagree. They say the scriptures don't defend that, and Jesus sure. didn't weigh in on homosexuality. Sure. So my question is, when you're talking to your 45,000 people in your, in your service, and some of them are gay, you're saying to them, you're a sinner. Well, so that first off, in my services, I don't cover all these issues that we talk about no, I, here. I, I, yeah, I don't cover all these issues in my sermons. Well, well, I can, we can tell that. But you, you, know, you make it clear that you think that, that yeah. homosexuality is a sin. When I read the scripture, that's when I believe that, that the scripture condemns it or says it's a sin. But it also says that, you know, lying is and that being prideful is. Right, so that, then you shouldn't lie. But, you, but for people who are gay, you, yeah. you're saying, so well, then you shouldn't be gay? Be gay. I don't, that's well, what I'm well, confused. Yeah, I think that's you the can't big, choose. Nothing. I think that's the big debate. And the scripture says you've got to work out your own you salvation. you think you can choose to be gay or not gay? You think you choose to be straight? No, I, I know I have not chosen to be straight. That's, I feel like that's who I am. So how could I choose to be gay? One question at a time. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I think... I'm trying to be respectful. I, I mean, I'm a big admirer of your work. I think you're trying to lift people up. You know? Yeah, he, I'm sure he does admire his work because he just butchered him on that. Did you, choose to be, did you choose to be straight, Joe? Oh, no, I didn't. Well, then I didn't choose to be gay. See how, how silly he is? Friends, he is the worst advocate for truth. And yet, everybody looks at him and says, well, you know, if that's the best argument they have, you know, then we just run over all these so-called religious people. Friends, if it's up to Joel Osteen to make a stand for morality and make a stand for what's right and make a stand for the truth, we're in bad shape if that's the best we've got. But friends, it's not the best we've got. As a matter of fact, he's not even on our side with those answers. He's actually helping the, fee the people in there. So what we're trying to get you to realize is we're, we want to make a stand. We want to be the kind of people that says, look, we are, are going to be the ones that will defend the truth. We're going to make a defense of the gospel. Just like Paul said in Philippians 1, verse, 
7 and, one, and verse 17, I am set for the defense of the gospel. We want to make a stand, and we will make a stand, and we want you to join us. We want you to be on, on our side. We want you to be in the corner with, with the truth and oppose these things to help us better our society. And that's why we have things like the tent. That's why we do these things. September 16th through the 27th, next to the Eden Mall. And here's what we're having. Here's what we're going to do, friends. Usually, we, we advertise, we have a question and answer session, question and answer session every night after, after the sermon. But what we want to do this time is we're going to say this. You've all seen the shows Ask the Pastor. But what we want you to do is we want you to ask your preacher if he will come be a part of a question and answer panel. We're going to have a table set up, a chair set up, and if there's a preacher that wants to come and participate and sit on these panels, then we will let him and anybody else who's there field the questions on how we can help our society. What are we, what are we going to do about homosexuality? What does the Bible say about it? How can we defend it? How can we, how can we oppose it? What does it say about uh, drugs? What does it say about uh, premarital sex? What does the Bible say about drinking and alcohol? What are some of these social issues that we're facing? Uh, uh, abortion. What are some of the social issues like, like racial tension and racial strife? How are we going to alleviate that? Let's talk about these issues. Come out and join the panel. Bring your preacher. Bring your preacher. Come out to the tent and let him have a spot on our panel. This starts September 16th, goes through the 27th. We're going to have TV every night. Uh, except on maybe uh, Saturday night, I think. But other than that, we have TV every night right here on this station. So we'll be doing the tent, we'll be doing the TV, and we want you to come out, bring your preacher, ask the preacher to be part of our panel, and let us give answers on how to save our societies. Friends, we really want you to come out. We want you to be part, uh, part with us, participate with us in, the, in this tent meeting, come hear the gospel preaching. We've got some great dynamic preachers coming in, and we want, to, want you to uh, uh, participate in that. Hear the lessons, ask the questions, free DVDs, free material, always. And so, friends, we hope, you, hope you'll come out and hope to see you at the 10th. September 16th through the 27th. No collections. Bring your Bible. Leave your billfold. And we hope to see you there. Till next time, friends, stay tuned for What Does the Bible Say? Coming up next. Until next time, always ask, What Does the Bible Say? And you'll always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? Are you tired of this commercial? So am I. Well, these commercials may be old and boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard, our new time.